Hey, Brandon here. Welcome to the channel and thanks for tuning in. Got another 2024 rookie report tonight. We are going to talk about Mr. Jalen McMillan, wide receiver from the Washington Huskies. I'll be joined again by my podcast co-host, Jason DiRienzo. And we're going to go over a scouting report. We're going to go over his draft capital. We're going to give you some player comps. Where's he going to get drafted in the NFL draft? I'm thinking day three. Where's he going to land in our rookie drafts? So I'm thinking round three, round four, maybe. You'll have to listen to find out. So if you play fantasy, you play dynasty, and you're looking for a YouTube channel out there that just isn't going to scout this class, man. But shortly after the draft, we are going to go right into scouting the 2025 draft class. So if you're looking for a channel that's going to give you an early look at some of these players, man, hit that subscribe button. Help me grow the channel. Let's get to the show. All right, Jason, let's do our last rookie report of the night. I know he's one of your favorites, if I don't recall. Yeah. If I recall correctly, oh, yeah. Mr. Jalen McMillan, wide receiver, six foot one, 197 pound, also a senior. Again, guys, we watched the All-22 film on this guy, the Texas, Oregon, Michigan, the last three games of the 2023 season, arguably against the three best games or best competition all season long. I really was interested to watch that Michigan game because no receiver on Washington really had a great game. You know, they all, you know, it was, there was, you know, and we all know what happened to Washington in that game, but um, I was really excited to watch that film specifically because that was really against an NFL as good as an NFL defense. I think like mirroring an NFL defense that we were going to get. So um, mm -hmm. really gave us the ability to, to really watch all of the Washington players, but Jalen McMillan, Let's go through his stats, 136 career receptions, 1,800 yards, 14 TDs, averaging 13.7 yards a catch. Versatile wide receiver, 63% uh, in the slot, 37, so most likely is going to be a slot receiver in the NFL. 67% reception, reception percentage throughout his career, 13 drops as well. PFF grades aren't really great uh, across the board. Uh, two of them are below average. Receiving grade 70.8, a contested catch rate of a zero. I don't know what that means. Did he not have one contested, you know, catch? I couldn't find one contested. Well, catch. He, he, you know what? Well, he was so. hurt for a good part of the season, so. Um, yeah. but you know, when he, he did play, obviously in the three games where we recorded those films on man versus coverage, it was uh, less than 50% in the 61.5, but it was, um, just above the, it looks like 30 percentile yards after catch 6.4. He brings a little bit of elusiveness and explosion to his game. Mm -hmm. Missed tackles force six. So that was pretty much tied for closest, you know, 263rd. So he's at the back end for that and average depth of target 9.6. So I guess I got some different stats on this card tonight, uh, tied for 357th. So yeah, the PFF grades aren't great. You take them for what you want, um, but really it comes down to what we see as a skill set uh, on the field. So I'm going to let you, you uh, have always been a Jalen McMillan fan, so so tell the good people out there what you like about him. Yeah, first off, I think he's going to be purely a slot receiver based on what I've seen on the film. And because I've been a fan of him ever since he was coming out of high school, I'm going to be overly critical on him. When I watched the Washington, Oregon game, that was probably one of the worst games I've ever seen from a receiver. He had a wide open drop on the perimeter, uh, fumble toward the uh, end zone. Like it was one of the worst games. So I want to see a guy who's consistent regardless of the injury. I want to see a guy who's consistently executing his assignments properly. Didn't necessarily see that all the time from Jalen McMill, but I will say this off the line of scrimmage, love the initial burst and acceleration instantaneous. He's very, he's a high twitchy athlete. So even when he's executing a break, it is very sudden. It's very crisp. Um, he, he knows exactly what he's trying to do. So you could tell that he is a blueprint within the navigation of how he is executing the route. Um, after the catch, I don't see much happening unless he's elusive. I, the play strength is a huge concern of mine. I did not see him breaking tackles. I saw him fold when he catches the ball. But I will say that the manipulation and the separation ability is second to none. I, I, I mean, I, I see a lot of what Jackson Smith and Jigba did at Ohio State, not saying that he's Jackson Smith and Jigba, but the same exact kind of na navigation and elusiveness and body mechanics to make things 
very sharp and crisp and nuanced. I love what I saw from Jalen McMillan. I think that he can absolutely find ways to um, exploit zone coverage quite a bit. If it's in man coverage, he's going to have to execute better arsenal of release moves. Um, but I will say this too. I went back and I watched last year's film against Christian, Christian Gonzalez, the cornerback that went to the Patriots in the first round. I watched him play against him and I came away pretty impressed. So as much as this year's film is a little bit down last year's film looked pretty good to me. There was actually a contested catch situation where him and Christian Gonzalez went up for the ball and Jalen McMillan's the one who came down with it, ripped it right out of his hand. So there's definitely some competitiveness there that I like, but I think he's going to be strictly a slot receiver. I think he's very nuanced with how he separates and his route running. I think he's got the speed to gain additional yards, but those are not going to come based on him breaking tackles. So that play strength has got to improve. I just see him as a pure slot receiver, but has a pretty high football IQ based on how he navigates defensive coverages. Yeah. And again, it was really difficult because he got the ball out of the backfield and wide receiver screens and, you know, yeah, shortly after the line so, of scrimmage. The so, is so hard. To, yeah, yeah, it really, it really is. And, um, but I thought he had some good versatility when he did play on the outside. I agree with you. I think he does have some, some giddy up off the line. Um, I thought I saw some, you know, manipulation a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but I agree with you with the physicality. I think he's just, um, you know, not somebody who's gonna, I don't, it's one of those players that I see that I, I agree with you. He went down relatively easy um, and, and didn't seem to put up a lot of fight to, you know, continue forward. Um, but I thought he did have a little bit of yak ability. He was, that was something that I had actually as a positive. I think if he could get in space, I think he has the ability oh, sure. to, to yep. be a, an explosive player, but I think it's going to have to be one of those schemed open type offenses that he lands in, in the NFL mm -hmm. where, you know, he's going to be a wide receiver three at best, I think on an NFL roster where, you know, there's coverage on the outside and they're using him and kind of scheming him open as a second and third option uh, on any given play. But again, this is just another player that's in the basket of these, you know, Let's get to his draft capital because I I kind of have him in the same boat. We had talked about Polk earlier, um, you know, really a, a day three guy, you know, could any I, I see anywhere between round three and five where he could come off the board. I'm sorry, round four uh, I, or four or five or six. Yeah, I think four through six is definitely the correct range for him. I, I agree with you. I think he's got that yak ability, but it is not going to come from shedding tackles or, or right. warding off defenders. Now, I will say last year, I did see better play strength than I did this year. So it may be there. Maybe it was the injury. Who knows? But yeah. uh, I think that's a good range for him in the NFL draft. Yeah, so he's probably going to be a third round pick, you know, late third fourth round you and i are in the middle of a rookie draft right now and i think we're just entering this on the third round and he's still on the board to be taken so mm -hmm. i think it's probably going to be a round three um you know kind of situation most likely round four if uh yeah. you know the landing spot is absolutely if terrible I remember correctly in this mock draft i do like the landing spot and i think i was going to take him with my last pick but i liked I like where Pearsall went. I think I took Pearsall last. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, I would take Pearsall just for the pure physicality. I think and his ball skills and body control. Yeah, the ball, up the ball the balls. tracking. He just yeah, Pearsall has a little bit more than what I like from Jalen McMillan right now. Yeah, exactly. So um, I mean, Jalen McMillan is kind of like a standard you know college receiver trying to make it in the NFL. You know, he doesn't have any traits yeah. that are exceptional. He's a little on the light side. Doesn't really bring a lot of physicality that you know you feel like he can win if he is you know not as fast as other players on the field. So um, my dynasty comp, I had Kendrick Bourne. I had a really tough comp for him. Um, Kendrick Bourne, I could see him taking the same kind of journey. A, a guy who's a wide receiver three on a team but have to see a similar you know skill set watching those two play yeah actually he, it's interesting to me because i think he is a pure like west coast type of just receiver put All him right. in the slot and he'll probably cook and I feel like Victor Cruz is a guy that I saw very similar to how he won with the Giants. McMillan in that type of system, I could see him thrive. But if he's not in the right system out of the slot that utilizes the slot properly, like almost like a Kyle Shanahan offense, I don't think we're going to hear his name. So he has to land in the right spot too. Yeah. Victor, Cruz, Was it Victor Cruz like a vertical 
threat, though. I feel like he was always getting. You know what, though? I actually, and that's what I kind of like because when I watched last year's film, I think McMillan could also be a vertical threat. It's that play strength, and Cruz didn't have the play strength. I I watched that a little bit. He had a nice speed release, and he executed a nice single double move where he just had to swipe and swim around defenders, not really Mm -hmm. use a lot of physicality. Joe McMillan could be that guy. No, there you guys got it. That is our rookie report on Jalen McMillan.